Hello everyone. Welcome to our second version of Momversations. I'm so glad and excited that you all could join us for today for this conversation on all things motherhood. Um, you know, we did this a month ago and it seems like time just flew by our very first episode. And I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch our program. It's a live broadcast. So, you know, we call this our version of reality television because it's uh, unscripted and it's an, an opportunity for us to, you know, share about what's going on in the community, but also talk about the work that we do with women, children, and families, and fathers. We do work with fathers, and I'd like to say in advance, Happy Father's Day to all the fathers who are out there. Um, we're excited for all that will happen today on our program. We have some amazing guests that are joining us, but before we talk about that, we also realize that there's so much that has gone on in our community. Um, in Los Angeles, throughout the nation and throughout the world. We had already been dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and now we're dealing with, you know, discussions and protests around the injustices that have been going on and um, the systemic racism. It has been a very heavy moment and um, we've all had to look at, you know, all of these viruses, so to speak, and making sure that as we continue to look at change and all that we have to do individually to make that change work systemically. You know, for both of these viruses, I know just like you, we're tired of wearing the mask. And at the end of the day, we all just want to be able to breathe. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how, you know, it's Juneteenth. We want to make sure we say that this is a celebration uh, Juneteenth is a, a celebration of a holiday about freedom and St. Anne's really works to help people remove barriers and make the changes necessary for success for many people and we'll talk more about that. But I want to tell you a little bit about Juneteenth. It's a celebration that many African Americans have observed for years. Juneteenth is the oldest known uh, celebration of African American freedom. Uh, marking the end of slavery in the United States. And, you know, people say, I, I, some people say they haven't heard of Juneteenth, but it's been celebrated for many years. Um, in June 1865, Major, Major General Gordon Granger, he led the Union soldiers to Galveston, Texas, because although the slaves had been freed uh, two years prior, the willingness for uh, some of the um, individuals in Texas to inform the uh, enslaved individuals that they were actually freed um, through uh, Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, it hadn't happened. And so he arrived there, made the announcement, and at that point, moving forward, um, it became known as Juneteenth during that time frame. So that is the reason for the celebration, that proclamation, the delay in information that reached the slaves. Then they said, yes, we have received the executive order and we are free. So I think about how that ties into us here at St. Anne's. We fight on behalf of justice for our families um, um, on every day in terms of trying to make sure we break down barriers so that they have opportunities and they have the rights that they deserve. We want to make sure as just as the families got together back in that time, um, looking at uh, having opportunities for a new future, looking at what that would mean for them, we here at St. Anne's work to ensure that people have housing, people have the opportunity to have appropriate affordable housing in all of our programs whether it's our residential transitional or permanent supportive housing we want to make sure that they have opportunities and barriers are broken down around mental health services and that they are free and affordable for everyone who comes through our door and it isn't just for people who live in our program. We're providing those services to the community. We want to make sure that everyone understands how our workforce development programs are providing opportunities to make sure people have the capacity and ability to get the jobs that they need, have the skills, and are able to make a, a, a wage that allows them to live in the way that they should. 
And so between that arena and our early childhood education services, we know it begins in childhood. We need to make sure that our young babies, our children and our Head Start programs, and we have almost 600 families that are involved in our early childhood education programs, that they have the ability and the capacity to move forward from a level playing field. So when we talk about justice, there are all layers of justice and they are definitely some issues that the world and the community will need to continue to work on. But I know that what we're doing here at St. Anne's is working towards making it better for our diverse community. So thank you to all the staff members and everyone who works on behalf of each area. And we have a variety of areas in our programming. So today we have a couple of guests that, you know, I'm excited to, um, you know, share with. We've done our first show. We had an alumni for our, from our program. And the same thing is happening here today. We are going to be talking with two women, um, both moms, because Momversations is about motherhood and the impact of motherhood. You know, we, we work at on um, parenting here at St. Anne's. Parenting programming is a big part of what we do. And so talking about what motherhood means to both guests, someone who's in the community, established, already working, and someone who has come through our program, because when we see that our commonalities are much stronger than our differences around motherhood, I think it will give people an opportunity to understand that uh, an, a mother who, you know, is older, and when I say older, that is always, uh, you know, within the framework of working with young parents, but in the community, that there are the same issues. Children who are teething, the challenges, juggling school, work, juggling all the things that need to be done on a daily basis. So our first person that we're going to be speaking with is Cheyenne Figueroa. And she was an alumni of our program. She's been an amazing mom. She's done amazing work. She's juggled school. She's provided um, opportunities to her, her children. And she lived here not too long ago. Um, so what we're going to do is take a quick look at a little video, Cheyenne Figueroa's son, and we'll talk more about this. What is this? It's a lizard. What is this? Jellyfish. What is this? Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus, correct. What is this? Horse. Horse, good job. What is this? Goat. That's sheep. Sheep. That's white. What is this? Grasshopper. Grasshopper. That's white. What is this? What is this? You tell me, what is that? It's a cow. Right, it is a cow. What is this? That's goat. This is a what? That's a goat. A goat? What is this? It's a dolphin. That's a dolphin? What is this? Uh, zebra. A zebra, okay. That's right. That's right. Uh, what is this? Uh, a bear, maybe? That's right. Wow. Is that done already? I'm so excited. I was watching it. That is amazing. And this video, Cheyenne, welcome to the program. I'm, we're so happy to have you here. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? So I'm I have to, to, I'm going to tell them a little bit about you, but before I tell them, I have to talk about that video. So Cassius is viral. He's gone viral. So a young woman who was a part of our program, who has transitioned into our, her own apartment. And I'm going to tell you to back up, Cheyenne, because we want to see all of your beautiful face on that screen. There you go. There you are. And she is a gorgeous inside and out. Her spirit is amazing. And she was in our program here at St. Anne's. And um, I was always so incredibly impressed in everything that I saw. Um, going to school, going to work, um, taking excellent care of her son, taking advantages of taking advantage of the programs to help her continue to elevate to the next level. And so, you know, she's transitioned out of our program and she's in her own apartment. She had an apartment here, but she's in her own apartment um, in the community and is working for PATH as an outreach case manager, which I'm very proud of. But tell us a little bit about how you get, you know, 
you had a vision for success. You know, what motivated you to work so hard to accomplish your goals while juggling school and work and parenting? And if you look at the result of what we see of your son, it can't just be by, you know, nature. Obviously, I know you're brilliant, so that's part of the nature. But it has to also be by nurture. How do you keep your eyes on the prize? And how do you, you know, have those results of this amazing young son? Um, well, I always tell myself that I want to give my kids a better life than I was able to have growing up. Um, I didn't have the worst life, but I always expect more from my kids than what I had. So that motivates me to go harder and continue to push myself every day. Uh, I might get up and upset that I have to go to work because, you know, who wants to wake up and go to work? But then I look at my kids, they roll over, smile at me, big and happy. Good morning, mommy. And I remember that I'm doing this for them, to be able to provide them for a better life than I had. Um, yeah. And that's amazing yes. because many times people don't recognize that, you know, like you said, it wasn't horrible, but there were some challenges. That There are times when we make that conscious decision to say we want something better for our children we want to provide that and that's that intentionality that you had that many moms have that makes the difference so you know what what are some of the programs or services that you fall, felt like here at St. Anne's kind of helped you be at your best because you already had that within you you know so what is it that you feel that happened here any particular program that helped you move successfully towards independence because that's where we wanted you we want you to spread your wings and fly so all of st anne's programs were amazing i can't complain about any of them um one person that particularly stood out to me was my family advocate and her name was karen she motivated me to be the best mother the best woman that i could possibly be um i could call her about anything any day i need to see her. She was available for me. She told me all the resources. She got me into workforce. And without workforce, I probably wouldn't be able to pay for the books. Workforce paid for my books, all my school supplies every semester. I just send them everything I need off Amazon. They order it for me. Tutoring. I was When I was at St. Anne's, I was taking a stats class. And math is not my subject, guys. Stats is no it's easy class. Terrible. <laughs> not easy. And my worker from workforce at the time, I believe her name was Carolina. She got me a tutor so fast. When I say I probably went on Tuesday for a tutor and by the next Tuesday I had a tutor. Um, and I met with him every week, twice a week actually. And I was able to pass that class with an A. Keep in mind, I had already failed it the semester before with an F because I am terrible at stats. So all my classes are online. So that was another barrier, having to take a stats class online so I didn't have the support yeah. of my professor like mm -hmm. physically in person. So because I was working and taking care of my kids, obviously, I don't have enough time to go to school, work, kids. It's just a lot. Full time, all, you know. So she got me a tutor and he worked with me till the end, very end of the semester. Um, and that helped me succeed. And now that got off my transcripts and I'm set to graduate this year or next Yay. year. So without the help of workforce, I probably would not have been fin almost finished or That's almost amazing. as close to finish without yeah. them because mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to juggle all those classes and so that was great and then Karen she helped me with motherhood like when I was when I first had my son I was nervous I was scared I did not know what to do and parenting and is everyone scary. says it comes everyone says it comes naturally but it's not that easy it isn't <laughs> it does it come isn't. naturally but you still need some guidance yes and Karen I would have breakdowns. She would come upstairs with me, just sit down with me for an hour and talk, watch Cassius, give me a break. And I really appreciated her because she really motiv motivated me to, to get to where I am now. He's so cute, so by the way. Thank you. <laughs> so listening to you talk about the supports, um, the support whether it was the kind of mentoring, the guidance, the tutoring, you still were determined because someone could have said, I have these stats, I have all these classes, I have a child to take care of, I'm young, I have all these challenges, maybe I should just give up. You talked about the motivation for things to be better for you and your child, 
But now we have the coronavirus in terms of that pandemic. Um, you're juggling, you know, with the environment. How has it been for you as a parent of two children um, during this time frame, dealing with the pandemic and, and, and trying to work and do all of those things? Because other people may be listening and saying, wow, she's really driven and motivated. What, what can you say to maybe help inspire them? And how has that been for you? You know, it's not easy. I still struggle, but I'm able to get through it. I will say before the pandemic, I had a lot more help with my children, but now that the whole social distancing, it's more so just me and their father. It's like, so I don't really have the support of dropping them off to go do this or do that. They go with me everywhere or there. I'm always with them. Unless I'm at work, they're obviously at daycare, but it's a lot harder because I'm more so taking care of them on my own mm -hmm. than having like family or friends help with them. Your um, larger network isn't available yeah, because of social distancing. Yeah. Wanna, distance mm -hmm. so that has been a barrier but i don't let it stop me i'm still in school i actually just i mean i just finished this semester and my overall gpa for the whole for my whole all my transcripts is still a 3.8 so it didn't drop me down i still do i'm still doing good um uh, i will i'm also in a program at my school called next up which is also for former foster youth so that that counselor she's also been a very um big help to me as well uh, and I feel like all the professors are pretty understanding of what's going on. So I just let them know, hey, you know, I have kids. Mm -hmm. I'm also working because, you know, being a case manager, we're considered essential. That doesn't stop. Yes. So I'm out there. I've this over this pandemic. I want to say I've been working 12 hour shifts for like the past three months. Um, so that now you just said something that really struck me. I, I feel like I had a proud uh, Mama Lorna moment um, in the sense of you're an essential worker you're providing services it doesn't stop you're at path you're talking about 12-hour days you're still you had a 3.8 you have a 3.8 gpa you're the one that people are looking to now you talked about the people who um you know supported you in kind of a mentor guidance role but now you have people looking towards you cheyenne as a support system, as someone to guide. How does that feel to, to be elevating and moving into that next role and that next step? It feels good. It really does. I never thought I'd be like the motivation for someone else because I needed all the motivation. So to be able to say like, oh my gosh, I'm helping this person or this person looks up to me. I have friends all the time that tells me like, wow, you really amaze me. Like, they say like I'm in school and I have no kids and I'm struggling. So to see that you're able to do this with your kids, still work and still be a good mom, it, it honestly amazes me. So I actually love that feeling being like positively reinforced because sometimes I still have breakdowns like, oh my goodness, how am I doing this? I need a break. Yeah. And I love having like support. Like even you still check up on me. Like you don't have to do that. You still check up on me. And I really, I really enjoy that. Karen, she still emails me. So that's one thing I can say about St. Anne's. You don't just forget about us when we leave. Like, you help us till the end. No, well, thank so. you for that. Now, one of the things that, um, you know, people are saying, amazing, congratulations. They're so proud of you. So it's not just, you know, me. It's you have a whole community that, are, uh, that is supporting you. Now, a couple of things. Now, the video, we talked about it a little bit. But when you think about you know, you have a son and a daughter, Cassius and Callie, correct? We're pronouncing it correct. We want to make sure because I, I love that Cassius name. Um, yes. In the sense of he's on, you know, this viral trajectory around, you know, social media. But what do you think it is that impresses people so much? Yes, he's smart. Yes, he's bright. But what is it that you think that you did to help get there, but also why do you think people are so excited about that video? I just want to get your impression. Um, personally, I think what got people the most is that's right. Is like, he's always positive reinforced. So now he positive re reinforces. Um, he started schooling me. <laughs> I saw and that. He was like, uh, excuse me, mom, what is this? Did you get it right? And let's say one thing I don't know if we said, which is important before you answer, he was two years old, okay? I know grown people who cannot pronounce hippopotamus, so, but go ahead. <laughs> and that's also with the help of St. Anne's, because he <laughs> attended school here for a while. Um, so I think people are so, more so like, in, like into it because he's so young and he knows a lot. 
And if he was here today, he could sit here and have a full conversation with us. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. he's very intelligent for his age. Mm-hmm. And I do play a big part in that, but that also has to do with school. And he's not, like, a TV kid. He's more so, like, yeah. books and toy. Like, his toys are all educational. Um, so I will say, like, he he genuinely enjoys learning. Like, there's times I'm like, Cassius, let's watch a movie. He's like, no, mommy, read me a book. Read me a book. That's like, wonderful. He that's even wonderful. reads me books. That's <laughs> so he, that's one thing he enjoys learning. He's very smart. He's such a kind kid. He's not a brat. He's not, well, he is a little spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a really good kid. He's a really, and he, he loves being a big brother. He helps with his sister. She's um, adorable. It's amazing overall. I love yeah. being a mom. Yeah. yeah. That's, I, you know, we're going to, you know, we have so many pictures of, you know, you during your time here and then also, you know, pictures with uh, our sweetness, Cassius and Callie. So I want to say that, um, you know, we went to go see Michelle Obama together um, and I was so excited to be able to have you come because it was all about becoming. OK. And as a mother, as a woman as individuals, as humans, we're always evolving and becoming. And I felt like, you know, as you are evolving and talking about your journey of motherhood and all the goals that you want to achieve, what do you think you took away from some of the things that were shared that that, that day? What is your goal and your journey in terms of moving forward with becoming? And I'll finish with that, and then I have another thought with that. But what do, what would you say in terms of, you know, who is Cheyenne Figueroa becoming? You know, you're raising children. You have a son and a daughter. You're a mother. Uh, you're a partner. Tell tell us what you want to become. Mm, I'm still not where I'm at. I'm still growing. I'm still trying to be the best mother and the woman I can be. Um, I still have, like, little things here and there that I'm probably not the best at. Um, but it's all about growth and I learn from my mistakes and I move on. I don't dwell in things. Um, I'm just becoming like the support that I need it to other people. Um, I love to help people. That Um, that plays a, that, that, that honestly motivates me to go harder every day. Like now when I outreach, I see people on the streets that they look to no one. And then I become their case manager. That's how I felt with Karen. She became my case manager and I felt like I had someone. So I like being that person for like someone else that has no one. So you Um, really believe in paying it forward and and giving that opportunity. Correct. So, well, I enjoyed having you there. Uh, We saw Michelle Obama and it was a moving, moving experience because during that moment, listening to her, something you just said was, you know, you know, around the, you know, evolving, make mistakes. We all make mistakes. None of us are perfect. It is a, a, we're human and we evolve, but you took the challenges that you faced. You took them on and said, okay, this is where I am and this is what I'm doing, but this is how I'm going to move forward. And one of the things I continue to say is that, you know, when people try to figure out all our programs, workforce development, you know, all the different things we do here, Yes, we provide those practical skills and supports, but at the end of the day, we want to provide hope. We want to make sure that people know and understand that their life situation and their opportunities for optimal success is there. And it's about offering that, removing barriers, and you've been a a tremendous model for that. And so we're so excited for you. We will continue to stay connected. Uh, I want you to continue to be a mentor for some of our, you know, young women that are here now, because you can talk the talk and and walk the walk better than anybody because you've been there during the journey. And so we're going to, you know, talk to you a little bit more uh, at the, at the end of the program. Is there anything that you want to say before I transition to our next guest? St. Anne's is amazing. (laughs) Well, that is wonderful. And I did not ask her to say that. Thank you. (laughs) So, Cheyenne, thank you so much. Hold tight. We're going to get ready to speak with our next guest. Uh, Lorianne is coming up. And I would like to show a couple of photos of her before we go into 
uh, our transition. She is amazing, first of all. Everyone that we bring on the program, so let me start with this. Everyone that we bring on, there's a level of connection with St. Anne's. They've either supported, assisted, or they uh, donate to St. Anne's. And I have to say that this woman is an entrepreneur, a mother of four girls. I'm a girl, you know, girl mom, uh, uh, and has been a businesswoman who has an amazing business, wife of the party. So, you know, when I heard that the first time I said, did we say life? They said, no, wife of the party. I said, ooh, I like that. And what I it was so impressed with Lorianne with is the fact that she's juggling motherhood. She has this amazing event planning uh, business. And, and what I think about her business is that she is also bringing hope and joy. We're in a time with COVID-19 and all these other things going on. I love just even looking at her party uh, events that she's had over time. Look at this beautiful um, table setting. She's creating environments with people like Kourtney Kardashian and, you know, rest in peace, uh, rest in power, Nipsey Hussle, and people who are in business, are in the entertainment, and she deals with all types of entertainers, A-list entertainers, but she also, oh, Lionel Richie. Now, you know you're going to get a lot of questions from me about that. But she not only deals with the entertainers, she takes time out to work with people like us here at St. Anne's to help us produce events um, that are beautiful and that leave people with joy and hope. So, Laurieanne, we would love to have an opportunity to speak with you. Uh, we're going to go over to her. There she is. There's that beautiful face. And it's Miss Lorianne Serna. How are you? She has cute glasses today. Look at you. I'm, I'm excited to be here. I love this conversation. I love the whole uh, beginning interview. And I'm excited to just, you know, talk to some lovely powerhouse people that want to listen, learn, and encourage each other today. Yes. So, I remember the first time meeting you. I have to go back to that. And we sat down because she was going to help um, support uh, one of our Evening of Angel events. And I remember being in that room in this beautiful space. And, you know, I've done event planning. I know about how things work. She started asking questions of the, the person at the host space. And it was like... And I was like, okay, she knows exactly what she was doing. She had questions. I was like, I didn't think of that. Oh, I didn't think of that. I said, that is why she is the wife of the party. So tell us a little bit about yourself. And and, and I have to go to those pictures in a moment. But tell us, um, you know, you're juggling motherhood. You're this amazing business and entrepreneur. I think I thought about uh, the fact that during this time, you know, I'm quite sure there's an impact, you know, to these you know, industries that are hospitality and planning. So tell us a little bit about your business and some of the pictures we saw, and then we'll go back to some of the other questions I wanted to ask. Okay, sure. Um, well, my name is Lori, as she said, and we are the wife of the party. And we are a woman-owned business, but my husband yes. does own the company and share a lot of the production responsibility with me. Um, very, very grateful. And it's very interesting to work. <laughs> He's a nice guy children with your spouse and do, you know, pretty much everything together. Um, but he is actually a big part of the reason that kind of pushed me to, to grow the business all together as a whole. Um, we are event planners, production yes. company, we do fabrication. We do a lot of donations and philanthropy for education mm -hmm. and programs that are important to me personally. And my team is always very, very supportive and encouraging as well as many of our vendors, a lot of contributors. People will see what we're doing and they want to donate and get involved and, that goes back to something that I'll talk about later, but you know, building and aligning good relationships and placing yourself with people that are smarter and better than you that want to encourage and push you and that want to be involved and excited for what you're doing. And for me, giving back is a huge part of that. Um, Laura, as you know, one of the reasons that we bonded in the beginning is, you know, my husband's mom was a foster mom for the majority of her adult life. So my husband has grown up with hundreds of foster children. And because of that, up until her 60s, we had foster babies and I just loved on them. And giving back is a really core um, independent part of what we do. And when I met Dana, I was just like, give it to me. What can we do? I don't even yeah. know what we can do. Check and see what we have. And 
you know, we, we do anything big or small. We believe in celebrating people all the way around. Well, thank you. And I wanted to make sure we share that piece of your story in terms of connecting with us. Speaking of how you have some of the people you work with support and give, I'd like to show a quick clip video of someone they may recognize um, that you helped us uh, um, with in terms of getting a beautiful, some beautiful floral arrangements after an event. So I think you know who I'm going to show. Can we take a clip? Look at that clip. Ah, Miss Chrissy T and and Mr. John Legend. They're so dreamy. <laughs> so look at the beautiful flowers. Did you see those? I don't know if you caught them, but they are beautiful. And it was so amazing. I think flowers bring joy and happiness. And to be able to have those um, donated to St. Anne's was amazing. So thank you for that. What is it like for you juggling um, work and, you know, parenting because I've seen you talk about your husband and I've seen your children here at times you know visiting while he's DJing he's DJing he has her one baby in one arm and he's doing his thing on the other side so tell us a little bit about your juggle and, and what that looks like in terms of you know being away because you do hours I see you on Instagram and you're spending significant time making beautiful situations for these individuals um, well, thank you. Um, you know, for us, I think one of the pressures that we have as parents, as mothers mostly is, you know, there's still always that comparison value, like, hey, well, this person does this and works these hours, and I see them going to this place and doing something a certain way. And for me, um, I never really, I couldn't let that get in my head because it was just a normal work. Mm -hmm. Life has never been the environment for us. Mm -hmm. And I was a young mother, as you know, most obviously with St. Anne's, the mothers can relate. Mm -hmm. And work ethic was integral to that. And that's the one thing that I'm very grateful to my mom for teaching me because there wasn't an option but to work all the hours, whatever opportunities I could have, which included nights and weekends. Mm -hmm. um, we rely on each other as a family. I think that, you know, Herrick, which is my husband, having so many kids in his in his his life growing up, whereas I was an only child, it really balanced us out to teach me the value of family and relationships. And it doesn't have to be your blood family because all of my friends are like, they're Thea's, they're sisters, you know? Um, I ask for a lot of help and I'm not afraid to do it. And That's I great. think that, you know, it, it, the worst that can happen is no, but most of the time people are really willing to accommodate and help you when they know that you're in a bind yes. and knowing what the sacrifices are that we're working, you know, and working crazy hours, just like all of us, mm -hmm. it's hard to do it. And to Chan's point, you know, when, especially during a time like this, you don't want people around the little ones. You don't want the yeah. little ones to get your family sick. You know, you're trying to be cautious of everybody. And it's been a struggle for us yeah. because the first month, month and a half wasn't so bad during quarantine, but now we are back out there working again. We're doing a lot of smaller celebrations, especially helping families during this time when they really want to celebrate their children's accomplishments that deserve to have yes. anything at all. So we're just rotating. We're relying on my daughter, Natalia. She's coming over. She's sleeping over. We just finished coming off of a two day. Uh, we were gone for two days working on an album release party with Tiana Taylor yesterday. And I, I cried that. a little bit. I felt a little guilty because it's been a while. And I was just like, oh, you know, I haven't seen them. And I'm so attached to them now from not working yeah. as much. Yeah. But then I had to snap out of it. It's okay. They're going to be fine. They yes. know their love. Yes. They know mommy's coming home. And we'll make up for it over the weekend. You just catch up. You do what works. <laughs> yeah. And Tiana Taylor needed you. So you were there and to be able to create. <laughs> but and I mean. album is released today on Juneteenth. So this okay. was a really big celebration for everybody. Yeah. You know, very, very important. So, you know, it's a way, it's also how we look at things too. So on one hand, we're working moms. We're out. We're doing what we have to do. A beautiful family, um, all of your girls. And you know, we could look at it as this time has given us more time than we would normally have. And so it's mm -hmm. kind of like bonus time. It's an opportunity to spend more time with family and take that for what it is. Or we can, you know, get caught up in, like you said, the guilt. And we don't want to go there because the reality is we gained additional time that we may not have had. So if we look oh. at it from that perspective, it was a blessing in terms of the time spent. So you're able to maneuver because you have you know, supports, although during this time it's a little more challenging. What do you feel like um, helped you to kind of get 
the level of respect because you're well respected in this event planning space. I mean, look at this beautiful. I just want to take a moment. I don't know if you can all see that there. That is amazing. It is absolutely beautiful. So what advice would you give someone to build up the level of reputation so that they say, who do we reach out to? Oh, we have to go to the wife of the party. She will make this event an amazing event. If someone's interested in getting in this field, as well as, you know, wanting to build an excellent reputation, what would you say goes into that? Well, I would say my answer will apply to anyone in any in any field, right? For no matter what you want to do. I think the first thing is, is to do what you say. You know, follow up is really important. And I teach that to my children. It's part of my mentorship to them. Do what you say. If you can't do it, it's okay to say no or a maybe. But if you're going to do something, you need to follow through. And sometimes I even fall short of that when I get busy. So I need to remember to delegate or rely on people that can help me to make sure that we follow through on even something like an email or a phone call. Um, uh, the second thing would be to communicate. You know, people just want to be communicated to. And I notice that sometimes if I'm working on something and I'm not letting them know, they just need to hear from us and know that everything's going Updates. to be done. Whether it's a small project, whether it's a big project, people just like communication. Um, I would also say to be realistic about what you can do and, you know, don't don't offer something and then just always come in and over deliver. You know, come in and do the little extra. If it's within your means, do it. Show up and show off. If you're going to do it, do it the absolute best show way that you can, whatever it is, you know. Um, and it, it that applies to everybody in any environment. I think what happens the most when relationships are severed is if they're disappointed. So if we set realistic expectations for both ourselves and whoever we're committing to, mm -hmm. um, you grow from that. We took a lot of opportunities as a business to help people when we were learning that needed our help and were not going to criticize us if it wasn't perfect. So we donated a lot of time. And I know that people don't always have the option to donate time and money, but that was something that I found a way to help people while still trying to learn myself. And then that built relationships. And then that just kind of kept growing. And it takes a lot of time. I think with social media, sometimes we're not very realistic because it looks like it happens overnight. Overnight. Yes, easy. It's true. And it's not, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it takes time. Relationships take time and they take nourishing, whether it's a work relationship, a friendship, family, motherhood, our, our children, mm -hmm. you know, they need a little more from us. And, you know, to your point, you brought up about quarantine, it brought back our family dinners, you know, yeah. at the table together yeah. that we wouldn't normally have and, yeah. and things like that. And those are relationships. Yes. It's really relationship based. Do what you can show up and do it right. That's great. Thank you. And admit when you're wrong. Admit when you're wrong. It's okay to say I made a mistake. That and is... I'm sorry. Sometimes people just want to hear some ownership. So, you know, here's how I can fix that. Or here's some options. Or this didn't turn out the way we wanted. Be honest about it. Because you really can't pull one over on people. You know, no. they know. Yeah. And they want to be acknowledged and feel important. And that you value that relationship with them, to be honest. And, and people don't like to work with people that they feel like they can't trust. So that's an amazing point. If I can trust you, then even if you make a mistake or there's a challenge... I know that your heart is in the right place and you have the best intention. So that's great. Everybody, right? You yes. have a team, you have a board, a committee. Yes. Yes. People rely on one another and it, you really have to think about the larger impact of your actions. Yes. So um, tell us, um, you know, if you've had a mentor, you know, in this business and then do you also, you know, are you a mentor to others and how, who mentored you in terms of establishing yourself in business? You know, that's an interesting one because we've been around quite a while. You know, I'm, I'm 43 years old. And so there weren't as many programs Great were available. Jeans. <laughs> yeah. Great jeans. <laughs> there weren't as many open conversations like this one. Like even 10 years ago, we weren't doing this. You know, people were not building and lifting each other up the same way that we are now, which is mm -hmm. one thing that makes me so happy mm -hmm. to see more mentorship and teamwork and opportunity provided from people in the same industry or brand collaborations or collaborations with anybody that can jump on and do some good. Yeah. Um, there were there was a friend of mine there. She is a friend of mine. Her name is Crystal. And she was in the wedding industry. And she was actually one of my biggest mentors, because when we, one of our clients that we designed for wanted us to do weddings, I wasn't a wedding planner. I had no idea how to do all of the actual technical parts of that. So I reached out to her and I just said, hey, can we do a trade? Can you bring on your team to teach me this part of it and run this on this day? And I will take this part and show you what we do on our production timelines and we can figure out a way to work together. 
and she was all for it, brought on the, you know, the A team. I learned so much and she has continued to mentor me and build me and support me now on my events. And she was a big piece of that. Um, Additionally, I would just see planning companies or people online. I was just always kind of watching. And I think there's two approaches. You can look at that and think, hey, that could be me. Or you can look at it and say, there's enough work for all of us and I can work to build together because there really is enough to go around. And And we don't have to come into with it. Yeah. Yeah. And so I I like that. And I'm going to bring Cheyenne back because I want us to talk about, you know, mentorship happens in so many ways. People who are just listening to us, welcome back, Cheyenne. People who are just listening to us are being inspired. I think um, you, you both were young moms. Um, in different stages. You mentioned uh, Lorianne, because Lorianne has a range. She has uh, 20-something to a two-year-old, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, look at Cheyenne said, wow. So she has a two-year-old. <laughs> I'm so breastfeeding. It's yes, wild. yeah. So, uh, you know, but you're doing all these amazing things. You have clients, you know, uh, the list. I'm trying to just pretty little thing, Drake, the H. Wood Group, Puma. You're doing so much. So you were able to get through, you know, the challenges you face, meet people, have mentorships, now being a mentor yourself. Cheyenne is still early in that journey. So when you look at mothering where you are, Lorianne, at this phase and Cheyenne at this phase, there are some of the same struggles we have. And a lot of times people will look at, you know, you talk about foster parenting, you talk about motherhood, Cheyenne's talking about, you know, being a youth that has come through foster care, but parenting, the challenges and the highlights are still the same. And so- And the passion that comes with that because you get your struggle with your feeling. Like, I really want to do this, but I'm tired. Those things are universal, you know? (laughs) And it's okay. It's totally okay to accept that too. And I think we forget that because we just go, 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 go. Yes. What do you think about that, Cheyenne? It's the same, the same challenges in a different space in a different time that, you know, we have to be able to be honest with each other. You know, you said people say it's so easy and or it's just it's natural, Cheyenne. You said that early on. It might be natural, but it is also something that requires work. Um, so our commonality in this time and space is so important. So even the challenges, you know, it is Juneteenth. We talked about this. We're talking about motherhood. You know, Cheyenne, you know, what is it for you to be dealing with the fact that you're raising a young black son in this time with the challenges? You know, are there things that young parents in our program may be listening to that um, that you could share in terms of your thoughts and feelings of what may be helpful to, you know, just in terms of the emotions around some of the challenges? It's scary. It's scary. And I just hope by the time that he's of age that it's better by then. Um, We've seen how much it's improved. So by then, I'm just hoping it's even better and he he doesn't have to experience experience what a lot of young Black males are going through now. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Because we want to acknowledge um, motherhood comes with a level of, um, in general, we're always nervous. Our kids fall. They bump their heads. Oh, my goodness. You know, all the concerns that we have, you know. So, Lorianne, if you had to say, you know, there was uh, the biggest challenge you faced as a mother, what would you say that was or is? Uh, Still balancing the commitment between work and motherhood because I want to be a good wife. I want to be a good mother. I want to be present. Um, And... You know, I've, I've honestly overcome that. I still face those challenges every day because of scheduling com- and commitments. Mm-hmm. Um, and an example of that would be someone asking me, hey, Lori, can you come on a walkthrough at 4.30 today to go look at this opportunity, right? And now I'm saying, yes, I really want to go because I could really use the money because we've been off work. Yeah. But yeah. I've got my, my children, and let's take that out of the equation of quarantine. But it's like, yeah, I can be there, but I'm going to need to bring the baby. Mm-hmm. Or... I'm going to have to wait until I can get some help and we can reschedule for next week and giving them that the option and then not necessarily losing an opportunity because I was afraid to say I have my children at another yeah. commitment. I think people are far more accepting now of that than ever. Yes. You know, all the rooms for nursing moms that are in places and pl- they just they've really come a long way in that. Mm-hmm. But I'm still so used to not having that from, you know, 18 years ago. Yes. 
that I still get scared to speak about it. And the bottom line is it's okay, you know, yeah. as long as it's reasonable, you know, yes. and, and mm-hmm. that's my fear, just always still balancing it and them knowing that everything that I'm doing is coming from a place of love for them. But they do do, they do know that and they show me all the time. And so, you know, you just, that's always the biggest fear. Do they know how much I love them and how much I'm working for them? to provide them the things and opportunities that they deserve. Now, both of you, it's funny, you both said that what you just said and what Cheyenne said earlier, everything that you're doing with the juggle, um, with working hard and you know trying to make sure that you, as much as balance as possible, because balance is different for each person, um, yeah. that you're doing this in the best interest of your children. You're right. doing what you can to make sure that they have the life of safety, of of opportunity, of comfort. Um, we talk about at St. Anne's that we don't want people to just to have the basics. We want people to be able to thrive. And that's what you want for your children, to have an opportunity for them to thrive. So we are so grateful that, you know, you had to the time and opportunity to come and share with us today. I want to have some closing words before I close out with you two from either uh, one of you or each one of you. Actually, I'd like to hear what you'd like to leave the final word for any uh, families. Um, we're getting ready to celebrate Father's Day. We're never leaving out fathers. We do focus on moms, but of course we love the fathers and the dads and we have a fatherhood program, which is new, newer here at St. Anne's. But tell me uh, just a quick word that you'd like to leave the community with in terms of, you know, how the moms who are watching and dads can make it over the time of dealing with COVID and all the other things going on and just life in general, life stresses, economic pressures. You talked about being, you know, out of work and there's so many um, pieces here. I would say that the struggle is temporary. Mm -hmm. Um, Right now, we're all working hard to be able to give our kids what we didn't have. Um, And then one day, they're going to be able to give us more and we, we're going to relax. So right now it's temporary. We're working hard for what we need and what we want, but this isn't forever. Um, also take time for yourself. Make sure that you're good. It's like I understand we have to work to survive, but always remember that you need to take a break and relax and get your mind right. Just make sure that you're okay mentally, yes. physically. You can't yes. just overwork work yourself, overwhelm yourself. It's okay to take a break. And that's what I often have to tell myself, like, this is like my first, I'm going to Jamaica at the end of the year. My first oh, vacation, right. my first break for my kids Yay. since I've ever had a kid. And I told myself, I deserve this. I you did do. good. I finally yeah. got my AA. I'm transferring. I deserve a vacation. I deserve a week away with no kids. And at first I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do without my kids? But now I'm like, you know, I worked hard for this. I should be able to do this. So that's something I have to tell myself now. Like, it's okay to treat yourself. It's okay to do things for yourself. Like, I'll go shopping for my kids and not get myself anything. And now it's like, I need to start rewarding myself because, you know, I have to take care of me first. Thank you. That's great. Self-care. And, and it's okay to reward yourself. Thank you. Because a lot of times we do. And it's great to make those sacrifices. But you should also be able to take care of yourself. Thank you, Cheyenne. And Lorianne? I would just say, you know, remember that whatever is normal, whether it's right now or next month or it was last year, is our normal as a family. Whatever your family is, you know, your like our schedule for our kids, it's not abnormal to them. It's what they're used to. And they make it to school. They do all the things that are important. But anything outside of that is what works for our family. And what works for your family is okay. And what works right now may not work next week and you'll adapt and you'll grow because that's what we do as mothers. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we support change and we take it all in and we just love on it. And there's going to be so many more changes and challenges ahead for all of us. And I would also say, you know, if for anyone that's maybe shy or, or not really on this side that likes to ask questions or ask for help, take some time right now to think about some people that you really look up to and respect and maybe reach out because even for us, you know, there's been a lot of students and people that have wanted us to mentor or have interviews or talk conversations with us where normally it's not that they're not important, but I don't have the time because I can only fit so much in. And they've reached back out and we've been able to talk to so many new people. We just talked to a company in London. Just try and try to give yourself a little bit more forgiveness to, to put yourself out there for your personal needs, your needs as a mother, your needs for help. 
it's okay and you might find that the other side of that is much more positive than what you expected. And then you feel so much better because you gave yourself an opportunity to try just a little bit further and a little bit differently. And for anyone that's listening today, if you'd like to reach out to me or send an email or connect with any questions, I'm happy to also do that one-on-one after the fact to follow up on any way that I can encourage or help anybody out there listening. So thank you for being wonderful moms, moms who are excited to, you know, follow this journey because motherhood is a journey. And um, thank you for supporting St. Anne's in your own ways um, in, in telling your story. So we are excited to see what the future holds. And, you know, Cheyenne, we have to connect with you soon. And Lorianne, we're looking for you to make uh, one of our events as glamorous as your events that you do for your A-list celebrities. St. Anne's is an A-list celebrity. I can't wait to give you a big hug when we can hug. <laughs> I know. Right now, I keep giving everybody elbow love, just elbow love. So yeah. thank you so much. Um, we will continue to work on behalf of motherhood and and you know father's day happy father's day to the fathers in your lives and thank you so much for joining us today and um continued success both of you thank you so much thank you for having me thank you thank so you, thank you so we talked to two moms today you know saint anne's is known for the work that we do with children and families and you know we provide mental health support counseling services but we can tell you about all the things that we do but hearing it from someone who was here is more important and also seeing who we connect with and bring into the program to support the work that we do on a daily basis I would ask you to take time to get to know one another this is an important time in our in our world and in our country. And you know, sometimes people look and say, oh, you're working with young mothers. And they have this perception, or um, you're working with youth who have gone through foster care. And you don't get to learn and know about people until you spend time and take time with them. You do not have that option unless you care and want to connect with. So I would ask you to continue to learn more about St. Anne's. Um, we wanted to have that virtual tour for you, which we will have on our next episode um, where we'll be able to share. But thank you so much for joining um, us here today on Monversations. We want you to continue to support us. We're an essential organization. We have been open and operating all of our programs and services since COVID-19. For those of you who may be watching outside of California, we're still um, under certain layer levels of safer at home. So we're still um, having certain aspects of quarantine to a certain degree. But we're hoping that that transition will occur soon um, and we will be able to continue to have our um, external activities and programs. But there's always a way you can support. We're always looking for volunteers. We're always looking for additional mentors. Um, our development department, you know, is always happy to remind me to say donations are a blessing because they are. Um, any uh, charitable support that you can provide for us makes a huge difference. And so we just want to thank Lorianne and Cheyenne for sharing their personal stories in their lives. They were both mothers. Um, they are both mothers, both young. And at this point, we're just thankful for the support and the guidance. And we'd like to hear from you. I know there are a lot of you know, notes coming up in the chat. I'm not able to see all of them because I am on here at this moment, but we will respond and thank you for any questions you may have. Visit us on our website, you know, stannes.org. Um, send us a note, send me an email. And if you have any suggestions as to a guest that we may want to have on the program, we've been around for 112 years. And Cheyenne said something about, you know, the challenges we face in life being momentary. And we're hoping that this moment in time will teach us many lessons, lessons that will make us stronger, grow together, and make change for a bright future. God bless you. And I hope you enjoyed our second episode of Momversations. Happy Juneteenth and happy Father's Day.